Hello YouTube, I'm Toby. Today we're taking a look at the ASUS EN9800 GTX. Now this graphics card is from 2008. It offers uh, two 6-pin PCIe power connectors, two DVI ports, and it's only got 512 megabytes of GDDR3, and as you can probably tell, it is a blower design. Now what I want to see about this card is whether or not it's uh, useful in 2019. But before we get into the benchmarks, I figured I'd uh, introduce my test system. Now this is a system I built a little while ago and it uh, consists of an uh, AMD Athlon quad-core processor. It's an X4845 and it's clocked at 3.5GHz. We also have 8GB of DDR3 RAM and it's clocked at 1333MHz. Now the benchmarks we'll be running today are the Resident Evil 6 benchmarking tool. We'll be playing some CSGO, some Counter-Strike Source, Subnautica and Fortnite just to see um, whether this thing can run these things. Now first off, I uh, fired up the Resident Evil 6 benchmarking tool. I set the settings to low and we ended with a score of 1912 points. And I'll leave the uh, GPU and CPU utilization on screen for you to see. Next up, I decided to fire up the Counter-Strike Global Offensive. I set the settings to low and started playing. Now this card actually did surprisingly well. I was not expecting it to do this well. And we ended with an FPS somewhere between 40 and 70 depending on uh, what's going on in the map. And I'll also leave the uh, CPU and GPU utilization for this test on screen for you. I haven't played Counter-Strike Source in a while and I highly doubt many people play it. But I figured we'd give it a test anyway. I set the settings to medium and high and I fired up the... Um, well, there's a video testing tool uh, embedded in the game, so I figured that might be a good place to start. And as you could probably tell, the game runs very well. And we ended with a score of 174 frames per second. And once again, I'll leave the uh, CPU and GPU utilization on screen for you. Now, Subnautica is another uh, story though. Um, I set the settings to low. And even in the lobby I could see that this wasn't going to go well, but once I tried to shoot, uh, fire up the game, my entire computer just crashed and I had to restart the whole system. And I really never got to run the Subnautica test, unfortunately. The last game I decided to run was Fortnite. I set the settings to low and I really didn't have high hopes for this game and well, what do you know, we're running somewhere between 10 and 15 frames per second, which to say it mildly is unplayable. We're not entirely done with this card yet. I still wanted to see if I couldn't uh, get some extra performance out of it. So I fired up MSI Afterburner and uh, I gradually started overclocking the system. And I did end up with a decent little overclock. I'm not going to run all the tests again, so I just decided to run Fortnite in the overclocked version of this. And keep in mind, just like before with Fortnite, I'm running fraps in the background and it's known to cause some issues. Honestly, this, the overclock didn't do much of a difference for Fortnite. I'm still getting somewhere between 10 and 17 frames per second, so our maximum FPS had boosted by 2, which is, well, still quite unplayable. Now, the thing is, when I, sometimes when I run Fortnite, MSI Afterburner has a tendency to crash once I get out, out of the game again, and this time it did as well, and thus I have no... Uh, extra data on the CPU and GPU utilization, but I have a strong suspicion that the GPU is bottlenecking the quad-core Athlon significantly. So what's the verdict on this card? Well, surprisingly it could still play Counter-Strike Global Offensive, so it's not entirely obsolete yet, although I'll have to say that we were running on low, and a frame rate of 40 to 70 isn't too good, especially not if you're playing on uh, getting very good at the game, you might want something better than the GTX 9800, but that being said, older games like Counter-Strike Source it did okay. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you very much for watching.